Jimmy, Mr. Beast Donaldson has built a reputation for pulling off crazy stunts and for being YouTube's biggest philanthropist, but he isn't always spreading joy. In fact, he has a history of making questionable decisions that have led him straight into controversy. Mr. Beast was still a teenager when he became a YouTube star, and like most teenagers on the internet, he had a habit of saying things that he'd later regret. In 2018, The Atlantic took a look at Mr. Beast's history of using homophobic slurs online. There was a time when Mr. Beast repeatedly used homophobic slurs on X, known as Twitter at the time, when interacting with fans and haters. In some of his videos, especially his early content, homosexuality was regularly referenced as a joke, and Mr. Beast seemed oblivious to how hurtful his comments could be. The facts of the article were bad enough, but Mr. Beast's response to getting called out only made matters worse. When The Atlantic approached him for a comment, he said, I'm not offensive to anyone. I'm just going to ignore it. I don't think anyone cares about this stuff. Despite Mr. Beast's nonchalance, people do care about this kind of thing, and he may have cared much more than he let on when he gave his comment. In the wake of the article, Mr. Beast did seem to tone down his language on X, and these days his videos no longer make jokes at the expense of any one group of people. It looks like he's genuinely learned his lesson in this instance. What's up, boys? Welcome. What can I get you? If Mr. Beast had stuck to just making YouTube videos, he might have limited his potential for scandal. But some of his offline ventures have caused quite a bit of controversy, and few were as publicized as Mr. Beast's burger. In theory, Mr. Beast had come up with a brilliant business idea. His branded burgers would be cooked at ghost kitchens and delivered to fans who ordered them online. The model kept his own overhead costs low and allowed restaurants that were struggling during the pandemic to have a new stream of business. In practice, this hands-off approach to running a food brand caused more problems than it solved. Initially, Mr. Beast Burger had problems when the ordering app repeatedly crashed on launch, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. According to critics and customers, Mr. Beast Burger had serious quality control issues. With no central location and no real way for Mr. Beast or his team to oversee the actual cooking process, it didn't take long for complaints about the food to start rolling in. Some customers were getting burgers so overcooked they were inedible, while others were getting boxes of raw chicken tenders and soggy fries. The food brand was always a side project for Mr. Beast, so aside from some online outrage from fans, he saw few consequences from the messy rollout of the service. And to be fair, plenty of customers were perfectly happy with their burgers. Still, Mr. Beast probably isn't going to become a full-time restaurateur anytime soon. Part of being a YouTuber is capitalizing on the latest cultural sensations, and Mr. Beast has a knack for tapping into what people really want to see. Unfortunately, in his pursuits of view counts, he sometimes jumps into a new project without thinking through how people who don't share his perspective might react. That appears to be what happens when Mr. Beast recreated scenes from Squid Game for a video. The concept was simple. Participants would play through the games featured in the show, and in classic Mr. Beast tradition, winners would walk away with huge cash prizes. Mr. Beast probably just wanted to have a fun time with Netflix's latest hit, while also giving away some money. But the video received some major backlash online. As you can see, every single player has a device strapped to them that when they're eliminated, it pops. The Nationals, one of many outlets that reported on the frustration sparked by Mr. Beast's Squid Game. While he poured millions of dollars into recreating all the events from the TV show, many felt he didn't seem to consider what the original show was actually trying to say. Some online were disappointed that Mr. Beast was flaunting wealth disparity by going to such lengths to recreate the show, which itself had tried to criticize those exact divides, particularly in South Korea. Some critics felt Mr. Beast's video was made in poor taste, but it still raked in millions of views, and Mr. Beast quickly moved on to other ventures. Mr. Beast doesn't create his videos alone anymore. Nowadays, he has an entire team of people helping him to create, film, and edit all of his videos. He may only be 25 years old, but Mr. Beast is a real business owner and boss. And according to some of his past employees, his management skills leave a lot to be desired. The New York Times interviewed a handful of Mr. Beast's ex-employees and uncovered some allegedly unsavory behavior. Matt Turner used to edit videos for Mr. Beast, but claims that he was never credited for his work. He explained, I'd ask for credit, he'd credit someone else. That would be bad enough, but Mr. Turner also says that Mr. Beast would insult and berate him daily, frequently using, quote, a phrase used to insult people with mental disabilities to drag Turner down. He's not the only one to allegedly have a bad experience working for Mr. Beast. Nate Anderson quit his editing job after just a week and posted a video titled My Experience Editing for Mr. Beast, Worst Week of My Life on YouTube. 
The video was later removed after Anderson says he received death threats from enraged Mr. Beast fans. In total, the New York Times spoke to nearly a dozen ex-employees of Mr. Beast who had negative things to say about the YouTuber. These former employees voiced complaints ranging from lack of credit to unrealistic expectations to frequent verbal abuse. If Mr. Beast wants to keep his positive reputation, he might need to make some changes at his workplace. I feel like it's just better if I just live below That's, my knees. You're, you're just very wise for a young man, because a lot of 23-year-olds would be Wait, balling out of their f***ing mind right zoom now. Zoom out. When you're a high-profile internet personality, you have to be conscious of the company you keep. In early 2022, some of Mr. Beast's fans attacked him for going on Joe Rogan's podcast. Rogan has repeatedly stirred controversy in recent years. He made headlines by platforming vaccine misinformation during the COVID-19 pandemic. His podcast migration to Spotify brought it greater scrutiny, and many didn't like what they found. Complaints ranged from Rogan's frequent use of homophobic and misogynistic language to more than two dozen instances of Rogan using racial slurs on his show according to Vox. Despite all the controversy surrounding Rogan, it's not all that surprising that he and Mr. Beast would want to meet up. They are two of the biggest content creators online, and in that respect, they have plenty to discuss. Some fans were still disappointed that Mr. Beast went on the podcast, with some arguing the decision says a lot about who Mr. Beast actually is as a person. Others viewed Mr. Beast's appearance as basically an approval of Rogan's hurtful language. In this case, it's likely that Mr. Beast was just trying to open himself up to a bigger audience, as he had in other situations that have led him into controversy. In June 2023, the implosion of Seagate's Titan Submersible dominated news cycles and claimed the lives of five people. Shortly afterwards, Mr. Beast went on X to tell the world that he had nearly been on board the sub during its disastrous expedition down to the wreck of the Titanic. This claim was met with skepticism, to put it mildly. For starters, his proof for this claim was a cropped screenshot of an iMessage text that was colored blue. Skeptics pointed out that this would mean that he had sent the text himself, rather than received it which you'd expect from an invite. On top of that, the cropping of the image cut off timestamps that might have proven that the message had been sent before the submersible imploded. Mr. Beast claimed in another tweet that he had posted a screenshot of the original conversation, which was apparently sent to him by the friend that originally invited him on the expedition. This explanation did little to quell the accusations that Mr. Beast was faking his closeness to the Titan disaster. Unless further information about this supposed invitation comes to light, either from Mr. Beast or another source, the veracity of his claim will remain up for debate. YouTube has stringent copyright rules, but things can sometimes slip through the cracks and lead to squabbles over protected materials. Mr. Beast, as YouTube's most prominent content creator, is of course no stranger to copyright controversies himself. In August 2023, Mr. Beast uploaded a video titled Seven Days Stranded at Sea, which quickly generated millions of views and went viral across the internet. Two weeks later, the video was gone. The cause of the disappearance was reportedly a copyright claim from a company called Surreal Designs, stemming from a seemingly innocuous two-second piece of animation used in the video. When the video first started gaining traction, ex-user Surreal LA called Mr. Beast's editing team out for allegedly failing to ask for permission to use the aforementioned animation. For this, the entire video was taken down. Fans have continued to debate whether or not something like this should have resulted in a takedown, but YouTube deemed it enough to remove the video. The claim has apparently been resolved as the video is now back online and has over 150 million views as of the making of this video. Our piece of most chocolate and cookies just launched in every single Walmart across America. Even some of Mr. Beast's supporters got annoyed when he made a post on X calling for his fans to clean up disorderly presentations of his snack brand, Feastables, at grocery stores. A number of commenters argued that this effectively amounted to asking his fans to do unpaid labor for him, especially given that merchandising and reorganizing shelves is something grocery store workers are paid to do. In addition, Mr. Beast specifically called out Hershey's chocolate bars as a product that was getting in the way of Feastables displays. As pointed out by YouTube channel The Surfs, this came at a time when Hershey's was subject to widespread conservative backlash for featuring a transgender woman in its advertising. It's very possible that Mr. Beast didn't fully appreciate what he was asking fans to do, and that he was unaware of the controversy around Hershey's at the time. After all, he has since been outspoken in his support for his close friend Chris Titan as she transitioned. Either way, the optics of his request weren't the best, making his critics view him as ignorant in this situation. When you're as popular as Mr. Beast, some people will always interpret whatever you say and do in the least generous light possible. This is a lesson he may still be learning, even after years of online success.
Some people see Mr. Beast's content as wasting huge sums of money for no good reason. To a contingent of critics, in a time when economic inequality is more central to our cultural discourse than ever, Mr. Beast seems to have no problem using his wealth in frivolous, absurd, or completely useless ways. Hurry up, Jimmy, it's so heavy! Can you guys move out the way? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. One primary example people have pointed to is Mr. Beast's December 2022 video, Hydraulic Press vs. Lamborghini. In this clip, Mr. Beast does exactly what the title says and destroys a Lamborghini, one of the most expensive luxury cars in the world, with a hydraulic press. In the same video, he fills a pool with 1 billion Orbeez water beads before dropping a different car into it. He also smashes a custom-painted train through a giant brick wall and several tractor trailers, among other things. Though many subscribers had a blast with the video, this wanton destruction caused one Redditor to make a post on the anti-consumption subreddit. Mr. Beast is destroying expensive items and buying a billion tiny pieces of plastic for nothing more than a YouTube video, insanely wasteful for very little reason other than to entertain. One highly upvoted comment posits, He may be generous, but he is absolutely the antithesis of anti-consumption. He could be making genuine impact on society with the money he's got. I don't like you right now.